week on Down On Fire. I'm checking out Jetwing Columbus 7 and I'm speaking to the billionaire. And it's done on fire. We're speaking to Gihan Kure, who has come all the way from the US for a short stay these days in Colombo. So I think you're, you have squeezed in the highest amount of interviews yes. and talk shows. <laughs> I don't think even Priyanka Chopra is busy like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she's also really busy in London. So I was like, we have somebody like that in okay, Sri Lanka. Cool. <laughs> and you're my stepbrother, after I know. All, right? Uh, the second play I did with Indu, and you were. Cinderella. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. we both went shopping for floral yes. shirts. And you, you remember yes, that? Yes. I bought an orange one. And I bought a, a blue, blue one. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. I remember that. Yeah. Bonding experience. Yeah, and we, do you remember the time that Indu made us suffer with tossing off the coin? Oh gosh, <laughs> yes. I could not get that to save my soul. I know. Yes. You, you, your first toss was in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> like a real uh, pantomime, yes. you know, like audience participation. <laughs> and he was like, me then, me. <laughs> but, but really, it's during that shopping uh, excursion, I think that we really kind of bonded, bonded as yeah. brothers. I mean, yes. we were playing brothers on stage. Correct. Yeah, it was and a fun experience. Yes. Yeah. But I think uh, Gihan's most significant character in all of Hindu's plays uh, is when we did O Colombo The Wedding 2. <laughs> Uh, it was just so hilarious. It's, it's up to date, one of my favorite plays of Hindus. Right. Uh, it's so funny, it's so Colombo, so, so scripted well. And Gehan had this signature dance called the Iskiri dance. Yes. It was just so funny. I think people laughed the most. Yes, because it was Shakira's Hips Don't Lie. <laughs> and, and I was the choreographer. That was, you, exactly, you played the choreographer. <laughs> And I must say, I think to his credit, Indu gave me my pick of song, uh, and I, I was like, okay, hips don't lie was yeah. all the rage at yeah. the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was definitely the best times of theatre. Yes. We had such a great time. Absolutely. From there to today, Gihan, you have really moved a few mountains. Of course, by God's grace. By, it, yes. <laughs> so tell me about this. Okay, because I didn't want to touch on the billionaire. Right. Because it, billions of people have done it already. So I thought, yes. let's speak a little bit about this love for drama and theater. Right. It's not a passion that everyone wants to willingly take up mm -hmm. because as much as it's beautiful to be in it, right. it's also scary and costly Absolutely. at the same time. Absolutely. And you never know when you'll ever get your return. Right, right, yeah. right. So how was it for you? How was this love, the journey of you following your love? So I think as an only child, uh, you know, I grew up watching all these classic Hollywood films. I used to read a lot as a child. So I think music, uh, movies, literature, kind of those were my companions growing up. Mm. So it felt like a natural extension to me that I would pursue uh, a career in the performing arts and in the entertainment industry because I think my imagination was really sharpened as a child. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a world of its own that was just creating all the stories. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and of course, Dano, I mean, I think unfortunately in Sri Lanka, uh, you know, we have what's essentially an amateur drama scene. Mm. Uh, so I felt like there was only so far I could go here go. in Sri Lanka, whereas in the United States, of course, it's all the more uh, because I think some people are under this misapprehension that uh, a career in the performing arts in the United States is fun and larks. No. But like you said, Danu, they don't realize yeah. uh, what a lot of hard work it is Definitely. and what a lot of personal sacrifices go into it. 
uh, living there on my own and uh, carving out a yeah, niche and figuring there. it all out by yourself because I don't think I, I, I don't know how is it for someone who is our color Yes. Uh, to actually get around and do a lot of things that you want and are people very frequently coming to help out and assist you oh yeah cheers to oh, good cheers things oh cheers to the yes, good, good things, good things in, life. in life yeah uh, peach sure. tea and hibiscus tea yes <laughs> mm. if, you're che if you're wondering where we are we're checking out Jetwing Columbo 7 um, this is the rooftop bar it's beautiful I've been here so often um, actually the place to hang out in Colombo. <laughs> Thank you, Dhanu. So tell me. And speaking of color, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I mean, you're right, Dhanu. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't much representation for people of color, especially from South Asia. Mm. Because, you know, uh, when they think of uh, South Asians, I think their mind immediately goes to something India. like India, slumdog millionaire. Yeah. Which is why I wanted to do my film, The Billionaire, yeah. to show them that, you know what, we are on par with the... Yeah. And we ain't any slum dog. We ain't any slum dog, dude, no. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because you'll be surprised at how little assistance I have had, Dhanu, because, you mm. know, there's a lot of talk about diversity. Yeah. But a few people actually walk the talk. Yeah, and be inclusive. And be inclusive, mm. exactly. Yeah. So I felt like it was incumbent upon me to... Uh, you know, do my own work and demonstrate to them that I don't need to wait for somebody else there to give me that golden opportunity. I can, uh, I'm fully capable of uh, creating opportunities for myself because, you know, for example, so uh, a couple of auditions I've had there, one of course was for the role of Aladdin when yeah. Disney did the live action Aladdin and uh, I auditioned at Walt Disney Studios. The thing is, you see, this is a blessing, but it's also uh, not a blessing because I think they, I mean, of course I can sing, but uh, I think they asked me to audition primarily because of the color of my skin. Right. Now the thing is, Danu, you know, you can't say any brown person can play <laughs> any brown role, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. and Aladdin was not really a natural fit for me because he's a street rat. Yeah. Frankly, I think I was... You're I would, far from it. I'm you, you, are, you are more of a billionaire. Let's keep it to that. <laughs> l l let me put it this way. I, when Aladdin becomes a prince... He's that's a, your part. That's <laughs> my part. And Aladdin is supposed to feel ill at ease as yeah. the prince. Yeah. I would have felt ill, Ill at ease as the street rat. <laughs> yes. So there you go. I totally get you. Uh, just before we cut to our uh, second segment, we need to just tell you, mm -hmm. in terms of food, they have some brilliant things. This is tempura prawns, right? With tempura prawns. So I, I yeah. suggested... I love prawns. Exactly. I knew you were a seafood yeah. lover. Well, thank you. You're this is a chicken soup. On. There's nothing like good old-fashioned chicken yeah. soup. Spot on. Yes. So I must tell you something. Um, I very rarely get a chance to, like, you know, surf the internet and watch videos. A um, few weeks... Actually, two weeks ago, I came across a video on the Daily Mirror page. Of course, we are a part of it. But I'll tell you why I stopped and watched the whole thing after the break. about his movie, The Billionaire. Now, we've spoken about a lot of things. Uh, I did tell you something before we went in for the break. Um, I very rarely sort of surf the, what can I say, the social media feed yes. before I go to sleep just to see what's happening. If not, I'll watch a documentary or something because I need to watch something for me to knock off. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> and then I came across your interview on The Daily Mirror about your experience about the film and there were some very pressing questions there yes. about the money investment, how was it? and. You spoke so well, I actually didn't pay attention to the content so much, <laughs> but I was just mesmerized with the way you speak. Your oh. vocabulary, your pronunciation is just spot on, which is beautiful to listen to. That's a gift itself, so well done on that. Thank you. I wanted to say that. Um, anyway, just let's quickly, because we have a few people here. <laughs> Angela Senimiratne is also 
in the building yes. and she has told me that I'm giving not much attention to the food that I'm eating. <laughs> Uh, who is also acting as the mother goose these days for Gehan. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, my, my mother, Shira Malkuri, bless her heart, she doesn't know much <laughs> about the entertainment the industry. The RT. Yeah. So, Auntie Angela yeah. has become my surrogate artistic mother, mother in Sri Lanka. Go. Yes. There you go. So, while she uh, she's just giving us the... This the cold the look. The cold <laughs> look. Yes. All right. So, queen. Yeah. So while we're at it, we just want to tell you what we're eating. Yeah. I've got myself this. Baramundi. Yeah. And these are all picked by Gehan for me. So. Well, actually, uh, by, by our uh, kitchen, chef as well. by our chef as oh, well. Oh, brilliant. Right. Uh, and uh, I, I have my standard spaghetti bolognese. No. Oh, you know, brilliant. Dano, even in France, I remember the year I did my O levels. We went to France. We went to Lourdes for the second time. Mm. And even in France, I was asking for spaghetti bolognese and, I mean, Italian food in a French country, but... Well, well, <laughs> if it, and they do it well here, so which is a good thing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so let's speak about The Billionaire, the movie. Yes. Um, well, the movie has got attention already. Um, see, even if the movie does great on the big screen or not, it's still an achievement to see a film shot and produced in Hollywood by a Sri Lankan acting in it, writing the script, conceptualizing the story. It's a hard pill to actually swallow and do it all by yourself. Yeah. Totally. totally. How was the process? I really don't think I could have got through it, Danu, had I not believed in the artistic integrity of what I was doing. Mm. There were times where I felt like I was never going to see that finish line. I felt like I was going to be stuck either in uh, post-production post or something like that. I yeah. mean, you know, uh, this can feel interminable when you're in it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because everyone is there with you during that particular stage of production, whether it's pre-production or production or post-production. Yeah. So, really, you, you, you can't expect the people in pre-production to see you all the way through post-production, for Correct. example, you know. Yeah. So, in that sense, it really was a solitary journey. Mm. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, you know, that's where you have to really have the strength of your convictions. You have to believe that uh, your creating something of quality, of substance, because I think for me, Dano, it wasn't just making a movie, just to say I made a movie, mm. but to really create a work of art yeah. based on a George Bernard Shaw play. So I felt like, uh, actually, to be honest, I felt like I wasn't just doing it for myself. I was also honoring the legacy of George Bernard Shaw, who's mm. one of my favorite playwrights. And also, I felt like I was representing Sri Lanka, like you said, in Hollywood. So yeah. I felt like it was imperative that I see this movie through to the finish line. And so really... Is it the first film that a Sri Lankan has produced and written? I think so, Danu, at least in the US. Yeah, yes. that's what I also thought as much. Yes. Um, my next question, now that you have sort of got yourself one foot or the whole body in there, <laughs> uh, would you be taking some local talent with you for your next projects? Honestly, Danu, what I would love to do down the road is uh, film a movie in Sri Lanka get down a top Hollywood actor or actress to co-star with me, set the film here, showcase our beautiful locations, showcase Sri Lanka to the world, and thereby also recruit a few young Sri Lankan actors and actresses yeah. to act in it. And which will also give them, it's, it's a win-win on all sides. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. I think, the thing is, I know there are so many talented young actors and actresses in Sri Lanka, what they lack is the training because we don't have, I mean, even though I studied, acting and drama and cinema at the University of Southern California. Which is one of the best. Which is one of the best. Yeah. I mean, one of the top five drama schools in the US and the best film school in the world, like, mm. not even kidding. Uh, so, I think if I could uh, probably, you know, pass down some of that knowledge that, knowledge that, got, that I've yeah. got. Because here, a lot of people do theatre and film or whatever it is. We do it for the fun yes. or the passion, the of, passion it. of it. Yeah, and we find this rush of you know getting on stage but for a country that has always done amateur theater right we are actually really good absolutely we have done some of the best musicals right and some of the most hard musicals to get through right and and some are like in other languages yes. we have managed to do justice absolutely yeah so which is a great thing so that means with a little bit about with a, with a little bit of professional guidance coming in yes. or people who have actually had the chance of studying or even institutes in investing in Sri Lanka is just great talent for them. Totally, totally. Yeah. And, and, and really, because I think when it comes to acting, you have to study acting technique, I think. Mm. Uh, and especially when you're delivering a performance on screen, 
film performances have to be pitch perfect because uh, you know when you're doing a live performance on yeah. stage you can fudge you can flat fudge note. And exactly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. whereas uh, once you know the camera never lies so what's in the pupil of your eyes as uh, Angela Sanivaratna says you cannot fake that and I think it's imperative that yeah. our actors and then and you and that's your window absolutely and people are seeing it right through right I will so in this interview that I watched on Daily Mirror there was this one line that's really stayed in my head actually they should have made that the headline or the <laughs> thumbnail for it and I was like oh my god this is in my head uh -huh. you said the Warner Brothers studios learned a few things from oh, you yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. and I really want to know how was it to work at yes. the Warner Brothers studios yes and what did they learn from you <laughs> Thank you, Danu. <laughs> so, yeah, because you see post-production that was done in Canada, because the movie was shot in Canada, but yeah. then the post-production that they did in Canada was just awful. So I had to redo the post-production in Hollywood at Warner Brothers Studios. Uh, the, the thing is, Danu, uh, one of the top people at Warner Brothers Studios admitted to me, mm. yes, Kehan, uh, you see color correction, lighting, all of this across 100 years plus of cinema in the United States has all been geared to flatter Caucasian actors and uh, Caucasian skin tones. Right. So uh, even the one of the senior colorists at Warner Brothers who was working on The Billionaire with me said, yes, Kehan, if you could teach me how to color correct uh, to flatter the skin tone of a South Asian, someone like us. Mm. Because I had to explain to them, Danu, uh, color correcting a South Asian with brown skin is not the same as color correcting an African American who is or, black yeah. or even a, you know, a Latino. Yeah. Because uh, they have a golden tone to them. Exactly. And we have a more rustic. We have tone a more rustic them. tone. Yeah. Exactly. So all those nuances, which uh, because it, it, uh, this is not Warner Brothers' fault. This is across the board. I think in America they they lump people of color together. You mm. know, and I had to point yeah. out that actually no, we we have different hues and yeah. uh, yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. No, that's great. That's really stayed in my head, and I was like, <laughs> I have to ask you this question. When we do come back, we're going to speak about. Uh, the tricky subjects that uh, the billionaire sort of touches yes. on and um, and it being such a sensitive matter especially in Sri Lanka how yes. was it for him to portray this role and bring it and publicize it here in his motherland when we do, do come back do stick around it's done on time <laughs> Welcome back, the final segment as we sit for a little chat with Gihan Kure. Now we're talking about the film, The Billionaire, which is already in conversation for the Oscars and also for? The Golden Globe Awards. <laughs> Fingers uh, crossed. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a great, great opportunity for Sri Lanka and for you, of course. Thanks. Tony. Now let's speak about The Billionaire, portrayed yeah. a character who is asexual and homosexual. So asexual, but not homosexual. Uh, oh, really? Asexual but gay. Oh. Because when you say homosexual, it suggests that uh, oh, okay. there's a sexual relationship. So it's He's a romantic relationship between two and men. And there's no physical uh, relationship. There's no sexual relationship. Okay. But there's, there's physical, uh, physical romantic intimacy by way of kissing and cuddling, etc. But it doesn't escalate beyond the kissing and the cuddling. Yeah. So, uh, an asexual person never undresses somebody else in their mind. It's, it's more about the aesthetic attraction okay. rather than a sexual attraction. How did you figure out that you were asexual? Because, you know, even as a teenager, I never I'm watched... I'm going to dig in. Absolutely, please do. Yeah. Uh, please, I stopped you at the crucial point. Even oh, as a teenager? No, no, no. Even as a teenager, I, I never watched pornography. I was never into it, okay. while all my friends did. Uh, <laughs> and I wasn't interested in watching uh, porn uh, of either... Uh, sexual orientation mm. you know uh, and like I said I never undress people in my mind even if I'm attracted to them I'm perfectly content to just see them fully clothed uh, you and know see them as a person and see them as a person exactly uh, so uh, in fact uh, I'm asexual in a way I'm also anti-sexual Danu in fact any sexual act kind of repulses me okay. I feel this aversion and disgust towards it whether it's heterosexual sex or homosexual sex yes. You just want to, yeah. I just, yeah. How did you sort of bring that into this mainstream film? Mm. Because in the original play, uh, The Millionaire is by George Bernard Shaw. Mm. She was only proud and uppity about her wealth and status. I thought if I make my character the billionaire, which is mm. a gender swapped version of the millionaire, yeah. if I make him asexual, I can make him proud and haughty about his 
lack of a sexual drive. Yeah. Because he feels like he's angelic, he's above the mere mortals who need sex. Mm. So he feels like he's rather a saint. But, uh, of course, Danu, I must say, um, this is not a choice. Asexual people are born that way. And, uh, you know, I think it's really important to have asexual... Is it the first time that it has been brought into main cinema in a more mm, commercial way? Absolutely, Danu. In fact, I've been dismayed and even appalled at the lack of asexual representation on the screen, even in countries like America. You know, TV shows, uh, movies, like you said, uh, you know, commercial films in yeah, Hollywood. It's a bit tricky for people to understand what is asexual because there's so much, so much of preferences these days. Yes. Which have been categorized. Back mm. in the days, there were no categories for it. Exactly. Now it's been categorized for people, again, it's easy to understand, but it's also hard to keep in mind. That's true. Yeah. Fair enough. So, this tricky subject, mm -hmm. when you were bringing it to life and when you knew that you know it's going to have an effect on it in Sri Lanka as well, mm -hmm. did you think of it? Did you feel like, you know, would Sri Lankans be comfortable because, you know, it has to have a reach to a big audience? Absolutely. I mean, on the one hand, this is a bit of a niche film in the sense that it's based on a George Bernard Shaw play. Yeah. It's a, the, the English is very high flown. So I think even in Sri Lanka, it's kind of a a more discerning audience that will go to see it. But that being said, Danu, I hope that as many people as possible see it. Not so much because it's my movie, but because I would like to raise awareness about asexuality and how you can have a relationship with a guy without the sex and mm. really more about the, the emotional connection, the psychological compatibility, the romance, the innocence of the romance mm. without the sex. Yeah, yeah. all the build up to it, which is beautiful. Yes. Now, how was it when you had to explain to your lead actors and yes. the person who was co-starring with you. Yes. So, uh, Randy Wayne, and I hope Randy's watching this, Randy's the most adorable. Well, Randy watches my shows. <laughs> he and I are friends. Uh, <laughs> hey Randy, he thinks that, you know, Hollywood doesn't watch Down on Fire. <laughs> what a, what a no, thing no, no, to I, say. I'm saying that because Randy just became a father. Oh, okay. He, he might not have time. He might not have time, exactly. That's there, that's there. Yes. That's yeah. uh, so, Randy is this handsome, blonde, blue-eyed, straight, guy actor in Hollywood. <laughs> I like how the <laughs> handsome, blue-eyed, blue blonde, blonde <laughs> straight guy. <laughs> yes, straight guy. So, you know, when we had our climactic kiss at the end of the movie, mm. uh, you know, uh, he had told one of my casting directors, even though I'm straight, Gehan is the one guy in the world that I actually kind of enjoyed kissing. It was like, because even after we kissed, he was like, oh, oh not bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Did, you find, did you feel shy to kiss on set in front of all of these uh, people? Honestly, no, Danu. Because you're caught in the moment. You're caught in the moment, exactly. You know, it's not Gehan Kure, it's yeah. the character, True. you know. Because yeah. I was watching um, Bridgerton, and there yes. is actually a, a, a cast, not a casting director, but a choreography director right. for their intimacy. Oh, yes, uh, the intimacy handler. Yes. yes. So they handle everything in making sure that, you know, you don't see things that you're not signed up for and show things that you don't want to ask more money for. Yes, yes, so, uh, yes. It's beautifully choreographed. So mm -hmm. uh, I was just asking you, you know, it, it, it takes a lot to, like, you know, bring out all of that on screen and uh, viewed by public. Final question. When you, did you show this movie to your mum? I did. The full movie. So she was actually on set for a while. Okay. She actually flew down to Canada. Okay. Because, I mean, we cast all the actors in Hollywood. We took them to Canada because we had these beautiful yeah. locations in Canada. And also it's a bit of a, uh, it's a, it's a movie based in a time. Yeah. Not. So it's set in uh, the present day, but uh, the language, has a, it has a, a, a more classic yeah. sensibility to it because it's based on a George Bernard Shaw play. Yeah, so you can't actually like put jeans and take Exactly, and, exactly. There's yeah. a certain sensibility yeah. about it. So my mum was there for uh, quite a bit of it. And when she saw the film, I mean, she's, she of course is probably my biggest critic. Mm. But uh, because I'd had these conversations with her about uh, asexuality and all of that, she, she understood that. That where you were coming from and in your writing. Exactly. Excellent. Exactly. Well, I'm so happy that uh, I've actually shared a stage with a Hollywood actor. Oh, my goodness. Well, yes. So I hope we get to do that play again, Cinderella. Yeah. Uh, I hope we get to play the brothers, the brothers again. Yeah. Uh, and we have actually written an, another <laughs> Hollywood movie here right now. Uh, Gehan <laughs> is going to come in search of his half-brother yes. who has been left in Sri Lanka from the US. <laughs> That's me. And probably <laughs> Auntie Angela will play 
uh, either. She could play my mom. She could play your mom. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. And we are we are living in like Muratua. Muratua. Yeah. yeah. And you fly course. down and you're and oh my gosh, like where's my brother, <laughs> bro? Like where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Dano, seriously, just stop it, okay? What are you doing? Let's just have our dessert. Oh, on that note, we need to wrap things up. Uh, thank you so very much again. It has been thank absolutely you. fun. And thank you to everyone at Jetwing Colombo 7. Do check them out. Brilliant food, amazing atmosphere. We'll see you with another cool episode of Dano on Fire. Till then, you keep smiling. It's a wrap. <laughs>